Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi, and today we are gonna be talking about a variety of new makeup. So we're going to do a comparison of the Armani Neo Nude Melting Color Balms, as well as the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin uh, Color Balms. So we're going to be, or Blurring Balms. So we're gonna look at those. We've got, you know, just some random new makeup. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's start off with the Danessa Myrex Balms. And these are called the Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder Flushed Matte Color for Cheek and Lip. Super long name. <laughs> so anyway, these are the Blurring Balm Cheek Products for from Danessa Myricks. And you know, last year she came out with the Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder, which I personally really like that, you know, especially for absorbing oil. One of the things that both of those products have in common is the ingredient called Upsolite. Upsolite, you'll see it in a variety of different products. I know uh, Linda Hallberg Cosmetics or LH Cosmetics, they use it quite a bit, but it is an ingredient that helps to absorb any sort of excess oil. So, uh, you know, it's really good for people with oily skin and, uh, you know, anybody who, you know, requires touch-ups during the day due to like oil, you know, if you have combination skin or whatever, you know, this product really kind of eliminates the need for that or that particular ingredient. So, uh, you know, these are going to have upslate in them just like the, uh, the blurring balm powders for the skin. I personally always like to use those kind of as a as a base underneath foundation, particularly during the summer. These here, you know, you can use these on top of makeup or without any makeup, you know, what, whatever you want. But let's take a look at the two I picked up. I was really excited for this release and I actually almost ended up buying all of them, but I was good. I, I just bought two. So this one here is called Rose and Brunch. And let me just go ahead and kind of buff that out. You can see these are gonna be pretty pigmented. So. If you have fair skin like me, these both of the shades I picked up are ones that you could use for underpainting. And underpainting, again, is when you basically put your blush on first and then you put your foundation on top of it. And, you know, obviously that's not gonna work well with a full coverage foundation, but, uh, you know, it works very nicely with sheer to medium. And this one here is Prima Donna. It's kind of your bright, poppy, punchy pink shade here. So you can see that Rose and Brunch is kind of more of a tea rose. There is a little bit of brown mixed in there, making it a little bit more of a nude rose. And it's pretty neutral. Prima Donna here is gonna be kind of your bright, punchy pink, but it's not overly cool. So there's actually a little, it's more like a strawberry pink than you know something with a little bit more blue in it so it's a, a pretty neutral bright pink now as for the packaging you can see this is plastic here you have a see-through lid there this is a screw top and you know i actually like that because that helps keep it really fresh you're really able to lock that in there so the product won't dry out too quickly but this is going to be a cream product and when it's actually on your skin it dries to like a powder finish so it's very similar in concept to the armani neo new melting color balms Let's take a quick look at some cheek demos of the two Danessa Myrix shades so you can see what they look like. And I did build them up just a little bit so you can really see the pigmentation level you can get from these and how they will work for underpainting if you are more fair in skin. But if you are deeper in skin, they will definitely still show up as well. Each of the balm powders have six grams of product. They have a one year shelf life and they are designed in the US, but they're made in China. So I typically don't like to purchase cosmetics that are made in China. Danessa Myrick's brand, that's one of my exceptions because you know they have China has changed some of their rules and regulations for manufacturing and certain companies and so forth, you can actually maintain control over the uh, you know actual production. And I am confident that she has control of her production of these products. So, you know, it's just it's something to note though, because I know that can be a concern for many people. So again, six grams of product, $25. They build up nicely. These are gonna have a very thin, lightweight texture. If you are familiar with the Yummy Skin Blurring Balm, these feel very much like that, but they do have just a little bit more slip, a little bit more of a creamy texture to them than the balm powder for the entire face. So these are gonna just, they have 
it almost feels like there's like a little bit more silicone mixed with a little bit of cream in there and it gives them a little bit more glide if you built this up you can get a little bit more of a dewy appearance now these do say that they have a matte finish I would have to say it's more of a luminous matte. They're, they are going to be matte, but there's still like a shine or sheen to it. So it's not going to be a flat matte at all. Another thing to note, these are vegan items. And, you know, this is going to be best for oily combo or normal skin, according to Danessa Myricks. So if you do have dry skin, you know, perhaps something with Upsolite might remove too much moisture. Now, a few other things to note about the ingredients for these. They are free of parabens, formaldehydes, a whole bunch of different ingredients that have been controversial. And it is also stated that they are vegan, gluten-free, cruelty-free, and the packaging is fully recyclable. So just something to know there. Now, one other thing I mentioned about Upslight and how it helps kind of remove excess oil and so forth that pops up throughout the day. It's really awesome, but it also will help provide a little bit of a blurring effect on the skin. So, you know, you will, if you have like imperfections in the cheek area, this can help kind of disguise that, blur that out a little bit. Now let's take a look at the Armani product and see how they compare. So I have two of the blush shades here for the Armani Neo Nude Melting Color Bombs. This one here is 50 Cool Mauve. And you can see, just as I'm putting my finger on here, it's very smooth, very silky, very slippery, you know, feels silicone-y. Um, but it doesn't have that creaminess that the Danessa Myricks have. So it is, it is gonna be a little bit different. You can see it's a little bit drier in texture. Not in a bad way though, it's not like a dry product. But this will truly, you know, finish down to a more powder finish. So it's gonna be a little bit more powdery on the skin afterwards. And I do think that the Armani gives a little bit more of a blurring finish to it than the Danessa Myricks. So this is 50 Cool Mauve. And then we have 52 Neutral Pink. And I do have a demo that I'm going to show you with the Rose and Brunch and the Neutral Pink, you know, kind of on opposite cheeks. So you can kind of see how they compare side by side. And I chose those two because they are the closest in color out of the ones I have. So this is 52 Neutral Pink. You can see, you know, all of these shades are gorgeous. The general color range for the Armani Neo Nude Bombs is gonna be more of that duskier finish. So you can see that these two shades are much dustier, whereas these are more vibrant. That's gonna be true for the whole range. We're, for the most part, we're looking at like more dusty finishes, kind of a very blurred effect. The Danessa Myricks colors are more vibrant. The undertones and everything in here are more it, like true to color you don't really see like a whole bunch of you know different undertones mixed in they're going to be very vibrant so you can definitely soften these down for a lighter look but again we're still looking at more of i mean they're not primary colors but you know you're looking at more of this exact color whereas with these you can really get more of that soft focused dustier finish that kind of can you know lean out to more nude tones let's take a look at these side by side now in contrast to the danessa myricks bombs which again have six grams of product the armani bombs have 3.5 grams of product they also have a two-year shelf life versus the one-year shelf life for the danessa myricks bombs and these are made in korea now, according to Armani, these are a mistake-proof, multi-use cream blush that melts into your skin for a natural matte look. It's airy, ultra-thin oil and powder formula, and it really gives you kind of that seamless, blurred finish. I would say both of them give you a very matte texture on the skin. You're not really gonna feel the product for either one of them once they are on your skin. However, the Armani seems to set just slightly more than the Danessa Myricks does. The Danessa Myricks, you know, if I'm putting it on like bare skin or directly on like a primer or something, it really sets very, very well. Uh, and if I put it on top of like a dewy foundation, it might not set quite as well as it would on drier skin. I feel like the Armani sets just slightly better than that. Regardless, both of them do last all day on me. I have been wearing you know, I've been wearing the Armani since they first came out. And the Janessa Myricks I've been using for, I don't know, probably a week and a half or so. 
So, you know, they have, you know, they both perform very, very well. They are both very wonderful products. It really just depends kind of what you're looking for. And I think one of the main things to notice here and to focus on are really gonna be your color ranges and the actual finish. If you are somebody who's really into more neutral shades, you're looking for kind of that more matte blurred finish, it has like a little bit more of a sophisticated vibe, then that's the Armani. The Danessa Myricks is gonna give you something a little bit more bright, a little bit more playful and fun, still is gonna give you a great matte finish, but it, there's a little bit of luminosity there as well. And I think these are really great for spring and summer in particular, and they really work well. I think, you know, the blurring balm powder for the whole face performs so well for me during the summer. I have no doubt that these blushes will do the same. So uh, yeah, very, very great. And if you are somebody with oily skin and you have fair skin or lighter skin, I would definitely recommend using the Danessa Myricks blushes for underpainting. So put it on, because of that upsolite ingredient, the closer you get to your skin with that, the more excess oil you can absorb as it pops up throughout the day. So if you put that on first and then your foundation on top, I feel like that is gonna perform even better than putting your foundation on and then the blush on top of that. So just something to note, if you have oilier skin, you might wanna consider putting it closer in contact to your direct skin versus on top of makeup. So when I showed you all of the demos, I showed you the Prima Donna really built up, I showed you the Rose and Brunch, and then today I am wearing the Prima Donna as well right now, but I have it much more sheared out. This is not actually underpainting, I have used it underpainting, it looks beautiful, but I wanted to show you how softly you can get it just on top of makeup as well, so you can really kind of blur and blend out these products. And I think the color range for the Jeunesse Marks is really fresh and exciting. So overall, I would have to say I recommend both the Armani and the Danessa Myricks. And, you know, it's really just going to depend on your preferences. Again, texturally, the Danessa Myricks just feel slightly creamier to the touch, but they are going to be both very similar to each other. Moving on, I want to take a look at this eyeshadow from... Flavado and Albedo, and this is an Australian company, and their motto here is love makeup and hate plastic. So the company itself is Australian, but this is made in Italy, and this is gonna be a metal, you know, screw top product here, and this is called the Velvet Eyeshadow in Cool Bronze. We have 1.8 grams of product here. It is a one-year shelf life, and this is cruelty-free. And I have to say, I really, I think this color is great, but what really struck me was the formula. I thought at first this was gonna be kind of your normal, you know, regular powder eyeshadow, but it's not. So let's take a look at the demos while I describe the texture. So this eyeshadow actually has some grip to it. So when you touch it, it feels very smooth and velvety on your skin. Uh, but when you are using a brush on this, uh, you know, to actually pick up the product, it, you have to apply a little bit more pressure here. This product is very velvety and creamy if you use your finger, but if you're using um, a brush or something, you know, it's really, it, it's weird. It has a little grip. It's almost like, you know, a Velcro type texture. And I think it, it really grips onto the skin on your eye very well. It applies well with the brush. You know, once you get the product on, you just have to, you, you wanna use like a flat, sh flat shader brush versus something like the crease brush, which is really not gonna pick up a lot of product. But it's gonna lay down well, it performs well, it goes on beautifully, and it's really easy to blend out. But what I really like is how it grips to the skin. And I find that really interesting. You know, there are a couple other eyeshadow formulas that I've used that have a little bit of a grippy texture, such as the Jones Road, the best eyeshadows. And I really love those. But those have a grip, yet still feel like a powder. This feels more like a cream to powder product. And that is new to me. So let's take a look at the swatch here. So, I mean, look at this texture when I'm touching it. It's awesome. So let's go ahead and we'll put this right here. And this is the shade Cool Bronze. Look at that. Really a beautiful shade. You can see this is gonna be a soft, uh, it's really more of like a fawn bronze type shade. I can see why they call it a cool bronze because it's definitely cooler than your average bronze. And 
it's got a, like a metallic finish here. So I really like this one. So the directions for this say to lightly brush it on for a gentle color wash or press the pigment directly in, onto the lids with fingertips for a stronger look. You can also use it wet as a graphic eyeliner. And I do want to mention that this was sent to me actually as part of the promotion for the Shop My app <laughs> that just came out. So, you know, th yeah, so this I did not purchase on my own, but I am actually interested in these now. So I think I will take a look to see what other color offerings they have and what other products. This is a really nice shadow. Let's just do a couple of quick comparisons. First, we're going to start off with a couple of Phytosurgeons cream shadows. And these are cream, but they are drier cream. This one here is Oxidized Olive. And yeah, I love the Phytosurgeons cream shadows. I think they are incredible. So you can see Oxidized Olive, it does have a little bit more of that olive appearance to it. But if you were to blend it out, you get kind of more of this like bronzy shade, which is pretty similar to the cool bronze. I also want to take a look at Magnetic Maple from Phytosurgeons. We'll put that one right next to it. Uh, this is gonna be even cooler in tone here. So this is gonna be more of a cooler taupe shade. Another comparison, this is shade 28 Unconforming Taupe from YSL. This is like my favorite taupe. This is gonna be much cooler in tone, but I just wanted to show you the difference because it is one of my most used shades. I also wanted to take a look at a couple Jones Road shades. This one here is Penny. And again, th these have a lot of grip as well, but they are a true powder. Okay, so this one here is the Cool Bronze. That's Penny from Jones Road. You can see this is gonna be more brown. And then this one here is Patina from Jones Road. And we'll just put that one right next to it. You can see that's gonna be cooler in tone. So kind of this cool bronze is kind of in between those two shades. So I would have to say I really like this eyeshadow. I think it's really nice, definitely worth looking into. I like their ethos as well, you know, the no plastic and, you know, obviously things made in Italy for eyeshadows and makeup in general usually have very nice formulas. So I definitely think this is a really great product to look into. And then moving on to some other items, or rather our last item of the day, we have one of the Hourglass, um, th these are the, what are they called? The Glossy Shine, the Volumizing Glossy Balm. So the Phantom Gl Volumizing Glossy Balm. This is shade 105 Trace. And this is another thing that I got in that welcome box. So I have been wanting to try these though. I've looked at these so many times, I've almost bought them, but to say that the shade range that they came in just never really excited me, which is why I never bought them. But I have to say, this trace shade I first looked at, it, I was like, uh, that's gonna be too warm for me. But I like it. <laughs> so it definitely looks kind of like a warm terracotta brown, like kind of almost like a soft terracotta. But it's really, um, you know, it kind of, it's a little bit more neutral than I expected. This is actually only one layer of product. It goes on, it's very soft, creamy, definitely a lot of shine. One thing to note though, this is a twist up and it does not twist back down, see? So once it's up, it's kinda up. So that is a negative on the packaging there, but you know, I do like the actual product a lot. So these Glossy Bomb Sticks have 1.7 grams of product. They're made in Korea and they have a one year shelf life. Again, one swipe, one layer is sufficient for full color. It's very moisturizing, shiny. It's one of those lip gloss, lipstick hybrids. Very comfortable on the lips. I find it really enjoyable. Texturally, the two products that they remind me of would be the Makeup by Mario. These are the Plumping Lip Serum Balms. So I have the shade Mauve Glow. Also, this does not twist down either, just like the Hourglass. Uh, however, the Hourglass does have metal packaging, whereas this is plastic. This is Mauve Glow. They're gonna be very similar in product. I do find the Makeup by Mario is a little bit more sheer, but it could be the shade. I only have one shade. And then these are from Clay de Poe. I think they've been discontinued now that they've been redoing the uh, lipsticks. They've, they've gotten really hard to find. But this is the Refined Lip Luminizer. And this is shade number two, Lavender. This is one of my favorite lip products. This is gonna be a little bit less glossy, uh, but it still is gonna have kind of a similar texture on the lips. 
just maybe a little bit more creamy and a little bit less gloss. So just wanted to show you those in case you've tried any of those formulas. It's kind of similar to that, but I think the Hourglass is really nice. I do hope they expand their color range. You know, uh, I'm definitely interested in trying it. It has been nine and a half hours since I applied everything and the eyeshadow has not creased. This is how the Prima Donna shade has worn. So you can see it's still present there and yeah, you know, everything has held up fairly well. I'm gonna bring you in closer. So here's the Prima Donna. And here's the eyeshadow. So I hope this was helpful. I'd love to know if you've used any of these products, what your thoughts are. Again, thank you so much to Shop My as well as Flovedo and Albedo and Hourglass for those items there. And yeah, you know, I am really happy with everything I used today. So thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you have a wonderful day.